Hello, and welcome to another Waiting for Next Year video. I'm back with pitcher preview expert extraordinaire, Mike Hattery. Mike, say hello to the people. Hello, people. I don't know if you saw how cool I put my glasses on right there, but I feel like I'm well, in one of those CBS shows. Maybe, like is it like NCIS? Or I, I don't know what the shows are that people watch anymore. We, have the, we both have glasses that are very trendy. Like, I feel like we both specifically didn't wear them for these videos because they're a little too trendy. But is this what you were trying to do? Like the guy who puts the sunglasses right. on? It's like, no, dun, dun. it's like an adaptation of that, of Sherlock Holmes, but instead it's really bad. Just did it. Yeah, I feel like by wearing these, we both lose all of our credibility. I have. Sports <laughs> I'm keeping mine off. I'm keeping mine off. All right, we're here to talk baseball. Let's talk baseball instead of, instead of glasses. Uh, game two, Indians versus Yankees, uh, you know, Getting into the the CC Sabathia matchup here, a uh, little bit of a questionable decision maybe for the Yankees putting him out in Game Two. I know that you seem excited about this matchup. Uh, what do you expect to see from Sabathia? You know, you, you break these down every time. You've had some great insight. Where do you expect the Indians to have success? Where do you think maybe Sabathia can have some success? I expect the Indians to have success all over the place because he's he's a uh, he's a uh, you know, basically at best a league average major league pitcher anymore. Um, he walks a lot of dudes. He doesn't strike anybody out. His arsenal is also just like completely different. I think the fun part of CC is that he's sort of embraced the transition from like top flight velocity to junk ball oil can. Like he throws slider and the most of any pitch in his arsenal this year. Cutter the second most, like change up the third most. He basically doesn't throw a four-seam fastball anymore. Um, he's basically transitioned from uh, Clayton, no, a really good left-handed pitcher to Jamie Moyer. Uh, and that's kind of fun. And that can keep you off balance. And I think the goal of the Sabathia start is to pair him with somebody like Chad Green where you bring in a righty who's throwing 98 to 100 all the time with a filthy slider in the fourth inning. I think this is a piggyback start. I think he only goes deep if he's either A, dominant, or B, the Yankees are up big early. Um, I think this is just a total piggyback where they leverage their bullpen up um, to pitch a lot of the innings in this start. Is there anybody specifically in the Tribes lineup that you expect to, to have some success uh, that maybe matches up well against Sabathia? I mean, Ajax has crushed left-handed pitching this year. Austin Jackson. You're like, I'll tell you this video, you're kind of like a hipster music fan where like somebody asks you your favorite song and you never say a single. You're, you're like, I think Lonnie Chisenhall and Austin Jackson are really going to really gonna be the guys who put the like. Look. I like this. I no, like that. You're going deep. 500 like, bucks a YouTube video appearance to say Edwin Acronacio. <laughs> okay? That's not what they pay me for, you know? I, I'm going to be honest. I just said that in the email. I said, maybe pay you 500. I, I don't think. <laughs> like, to be clear, that's 500 more than I would be getting paid. For me uh, let's touch quickly, as we both take a swig of our beer here, uh, let's touch quickly on Tito's decision to be a weirdo uh, with, with his rotation. So they're going, their early reports were, you know, they could always change Bauer, Kluber, Carrasco possibly Tomlin for game four, and then I assume back to Kluber. Uh, it feels like getting too cute. Like, I, I have yet to see the upside of this in any way. Um, if if you're trying to get Kluber to be able to pitch game five, why wouldn't you just pitch him in game one? You have two of the best pitchers in the American League. Why wouldn't you just go one-two with them? You know, try to get 2-0, and then you don't have to worry about it. You can just, you know, whether Bowers game three, who's still really good, and whether you do Tomlin or somebody else, but – I think you're getting really cute where Bauer pitches game one. If you lose that game, suddenly you're down 0-1. You know, you're, you're, you are you're lose home field advantage. You have Tomlin pitching in Yankee Stadium, which is like the most terrifying thing, the worst matchup I can possibly think of for Tomlin against that lineup in that stadium. Like, I, talk me through it. Make me feel better. I, I, feel, I feel not better. I refuse. Um, no, I don't get it. Um, I sort of get the argument that you're protecting Kluber arm-wise and setting him up for a start um, in the ALCS. I think that's a foolish presumption if that's your argument. Um, it's really hard as a I, Cleveland fan to like be like, 
oh no, we're just we're we got the series in the bag. Like we'll just go out in the next one. Like we've had some success in the last you know year or two years, but like not not enough to race to to wash all the Cleveland off of us, right? Like yeah, it's effing baseball too. Like you want to manipulate those percentages as much as possible because the margins are so razor thin. Um, and this isn't a thing where you just like play your stars and you rest. LeBron in the third quarter against the Raptors like you don't get to do that in baseball that's not a thing right like those those 50 years without a title or whatever like that was just like a bruise that healed that's like a scar that goes all the way down and like I look at every time I look in the mirror like I, like I, we could win the next 20 World Series in the next the 21st I'd be like man this is Cleveland you don't know what's gonna happen and like I, I just <laughs> feel like I, I feel like he's tempting fate I don't know I do too I think the thing I don't get is like there's a pretty decent chance of rain on Friday. You have a Saturday off day, and to me, I think if you have you know a lot of rain, that Friday start might get punted to Saturday, in which case Kluber can't go again in the series. So you're basically risking the possibility that your best pitcher pitches once in the series when one of the advantages over the wild card team is that your best pitcher gets to go twice and their best pitcher gets to go only once. So you basically have the opportunity where we could be punting one of the biggest advantages of the wild card format and of getting the one seed, in which case I don't really get that. And second of all, this Yankees team is not, you know, I think they're a wild card team, but they're really freaking good. And to me, they're the scariest team they're going to face in the playoffs. They have a dominant bullpen. They have offense that produces tons of power, which plays up in the playoffs because we all know that like extended innings and contact-driven offenses are diminished when you're facing elite pitching. Um, so I think, to me, they're really playing with fire in that this is the toughest roster I think they face in the AL, and they're creating a risk of not see- having Kluber pitch twice. And look, Kluber's going to find a way to pitch twice in a seven-game series. I'm not worried about finding a way to get Kluber to start game two and game six of an ALCS if we get there. I want to see him pitch two in the ALDS because that's what but we plan to do. Right, but not only that, we have Carrasco, who's what, a top 5'10 pitcher in the American League? I mean, you know, not exactly a slouch here. And we're also making sure that he only – like we're making sure that we have two guys who are top 5'10 pitchers in the AL, and both of them are only going to get one game. It, 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 it's – it's potentially. insane. Potentially. potentially. Yeah, but it feels like we're taking a, a huge strength of ours and kind of nullifying it a little bit. And all of a sudden, if you're saying, all right, well, you know, you're not getting some of the advantage of starting pitching out. Well, don't get me wrong. I love our, line, our lineup. I love our bullpen. But things start to look a lot more even as soon as you start to do that. As soon as you start saying you're relying on Bauer and Tomlin and freaking Clevenger or, you know, maybe Salazar, but you know, any, do any of those make you feel great if you're counting on three starts from them? No, I, I totally agree. I think, I think the Indians could have been a situation where maybe Kluber loses a day's rest and Carrasco loses one, but they could have had two Kluber starts, two Carrasco starts and a Bauer start. And the thing about those is you don't have to push them out that far in that you sacrifice a day of rest, but you can just let them empty the chamber for four or five innings, and then you go to your bullpen, which has Clevenger, which has Salazar, which has Miller, which has Allen, which has Shaw, which has Smith. I mean, we're not, I think people are assuming that you have to, if you're pitching them on day's rest, then we have to, you know, they're going to still go seven innings. I don't think that's the case. I'm just saying, let's go get four or five really good innings from Corey Kluber twice. Let's do that with Carrasco. Let's go to the next round. Yeah, I, I can't imagine sitting down and, and looking at your rotation and seeing Kluber and Krasko and being like, what if we just didn't pitch them as much? Eh? Like, like, it just eh? feels insane. Like, you know, that's one of those things I feel like when you have a meeting, like, I assume that there was a meeting where they all sat down and got, like, somebody would raise their hand and be like, meh, don't, I, hey, hey, guys, I, I don't get it. Explain it to me again. And, you know, and kind of shut the whole thing down. Like, this is insane. It's a bad decision. You know, we talked last video about process over results, and you know, there's probably a decent chance we we win this series, and it doesn't matter, and we look foolish for ever questioning Tito because, for whatever reason, everything you know Tito touches turns to gold. But I just I don't get this one at all, and I get that he knows baseball better than I do. Blah 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 blah. But it's really hard to look at this situation and say that this makes more sense. Can we? 
for a second talk about the fact that this roster was like Tito proof. I mean, this roster was so freaking talented and he's going to get so much credit for this. And he just had the best lineup in the American league. He had the best rotation and the best bullpen. I swear to God, Manny act gets you to 98 wins. I swear to God. And he's going to get a like, you know, like excuse from any doubt of this decision. And it, like there's a 65% chance it still works out because the Indians are just that loaded, even though this is a highly variance driven like playoff setup, they're just so loaded that there's a really good odds. It still works out, but that doesn't make it a good decision. And that drives me insane. I don't get why we can't have that conversation. Since you brought up maniac, can I tell my maniac story? Yes. So when maniac was the manager, my wife had a big crush on him. Just for whatever okay. reason, just thought he was an attractive, an attractive man. And I think everybody, he did something. I just tweeted back like, oh man, my wife has a huge crush on you, blah, blah, blah. So I got to meet him at a bowling event. My wife and I were at this bowling charity event. Maniac was there. And I walked up and I had a, a name tag thing on with my handle, my, my Twitter handle, sports number, or whatever it was at that time. I'm like, oh yeah, Maniac, it's awesome to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Huge Indians fan. He looks at my handle and he goes, you're that dude whose wife has a crush on me, right? <laughs> and my wife is there. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And so I pulled her over, and she's, like, red-faced. And, like, <laughs> we have these pictures of her and Manny acted together. And it just completely embarrassed everything. Oh, man, it was so wonderful. That's great. Yeah, that's my Manny Acta story. I feel like I have, we have to close on that Manny Acta story. We've done our Tito rant. We've done my Acta story. I think we're ready for game two. So, all right, everybody. Cheers. Mike, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we will – Try to keep these going. Try to keep reading all these games. Uh, hopefully, Indians pull through, and, and we have a bunch of these to do. And I have a bunch of homework and a bunch of editing to do. So uh, we'll see you next time. This has been Waiting for Next Year. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Go Tribe.